everybody. In this video, this last video in the series about the traffic cones, we're going to examine this third bullet point, which is what material should we use to manufacture this traffic cone and why? Okay, so these are all related questions. I know this question kind of seems like it's out of out of left field. You know, like where did they even get this, and how are we supposed to well, how are we supposed to determine this? But guys, this, these questions, there's a reason that we have these bullet points that they're listed together in the group. This must be related to the density and the weight and the volume of this particular material, right? So here's what we know is in the last video, we determined that the density of the material is 0 0.04733 pounds per cubic inch. We know the density of the material. And earlier in the semester, just a not that long ago, if you're going in order in the curriculum, we did activity 5.3 and we looked at all these different types of uses and densities of materials. So you'll notice we have a whole section on plastics, which obviously most of us understand a traffic cone is probably going to be plastic, okay? But what we run into here is if we wanted a comparison, our value here is in pounds per cubic inch and the values in this table are grams per cubic centimeter. So you know what, Let's, I'm just going to do this exactly like my students want to do it all the time. 047333 pounds per cubic inch to grams per cubic centimeter. And of course, actually in class, I'm going to make you use like an Excel spreadsheet to do this or a unit conversion. But for the video, let's go ahead and make it quick. Oh, look at that. It's 1.31 grams per cubic centimeter. So what we want to do then is come back here and say, now that we've converted it, is there anything that's right around 1.31 grams per cubic centimeter? And understand there's going to be a little bit of rounding, right? So I look through the plastics and I say, ooh, cellulose acetate. Okay, maybe, maybe that's 1.3. Uh, maybe it's PVC, polyvinyl chloride. Okay, and it looks like those are the two that are going to be my best bet, either PVC. And I look here and I look at the uses and I'm like, oh man, I don't know, uh, gutters, soles of shoes, blister packs, floor mats. Floor mats would be nice because we want this thing to stick to the ground, right? Um, how about cellulose acetate, photofilms, magnetic, okay, brushes, combs, textiles. You know what, if you're one of my students, you could say either one of those and as long as you're able to justify the reason why. Listen, the density is about the same. We calculated the density to be 1.31 grams per cubic centimeter in part two. And look at these two materials that are 1.31 grams per cubic centimeter here. These would be great choices. How about we go Google it? What are traffic cones made of? Let's see what that says. How about that? Originally made of concrete, today's versions are more brightly colored, colored thermoplastic or rubber cones. Thermoplastic is called TPR or rubber. Recycled PVC from bottles can be used. Oh man, you know what? This would be a great answer is if you said something along the lines of, I know the density, I calculated the density, I converted that to grams per cubic centimeter. I compared this to the list that I found in activity 5.3 PVC, and I saw that some of the uses matched what we were trying to do here, similar types of plastic. And then I even checked on Google what tra traffic cones are made of, and it lined up with what I was thinking with my math. I would think that that was a great answer from a student. So we're just trying to put everything together in this particular question. It's dealing with weight. It's dealing with density. It's dealing with an application. And that's the kind of thing that we want you to be able to do as a student in our Project Lead the Way program. Hopefully the lead through made sense. Um, there are three videos now on the traffic cone. You put all those together and it should give you a pretty good picture of how to do that problem and how to apply it in future problems. If you have any questions, ask me in class.